Hi everyone, I'm Marie and we are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Hey everybody, happy Wednesday and happy spring wherever you are. I know that some of our friends on the East Coast are expecting rain. We have friends joining us from all over the world today and thank you so much for being here. Today we are going to needle felt a furry bear. Last week we made cookie, this week we are going to make a turned cookie into muffin, which is a furry bear. And we're really excited to share this with you today. So thank you for being here, everyone. Please say hi and where you're from. Join in the conversation. And for those of you who don't know us, we are Living Felt. We're based here in Central Texas in the United States. This is what we like to do on Wednesdays is hang out with our friends for a little while. And so I want to say hi to some folks that are already joining us. And thank you everybody for tuning in. Now, so many of you commented last week and it's been great, great fun seeing all of your bears in our group. I wanna tell you, they are of every color of the rainbow and every single one of them adorable. Hi to Dori, hi out there to Monica in Ohio, Evie in Norway, thank you for tuning in. Monica in Alabama, Nicole says, it's very cold in Wisconsin. Uh, Wendy is in Nevada, Jeanette, hello to you. Noemi in Canada. Uh, everyone thank you so much for being here we so appreciate you so today is an interactive hour we like to hang out in this hour ask questions chime in contribute you're gonna see the chat off to the side participate in that and you'll be entered to win something at the end of the show uh, and if you're watching the replay thanks for watching comment down below because you get a chance to win too so on that note I have some prizes to give away from last week where we needle felted cookie and our winners are Dara Munier. I hope I'm saying that right. M E U N I E R. I, how would you say it? Munier? Munier, Dara, and Pat Vickery. Congratulations, gals. Thank you. And you win either a needle felting bear kit, we'll let you choose from our original lavender bear, or the kit that we have for these guys. Um, or you can choose an MC1 goodie pack if neither of those really fit what you want. So welcome everybody. If you're new, say I'm new. And now with me here, as always, are the most magical of fairies in all the land. And they're gonna share with you a few things that you might like for needle felting your own bears. So the very first up is Miss Fairy Holly. Yay! Yeah. Hi everyone. So we're gonna show you one of our cute little bears that we did. Gosh, it was last year already, yeah. wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Our little koala mates. He's one of my little favorites because I know you really wanna know this about me, but <laughs> I've had a pin pal in Australia since I was eight years old. Wow. And I'm much older than eight now. So it's been a really, really long time. But he's super cute and you can put a little pin back on there. Um, he's adorable and we have the full kit comes with all the supplies you need the pin back the eyes and all the wool So if you're in the mood for more bears after you finish cookie and muffin and your very best friend Try the koala mate <laughs> and now we have miss fairy Ann. Yay! Hey friends, thank you so much for joining us today We are going to be working with New Zealand Coriadale wool roving today we love the Coriadale. It's one of our go-to fibers for creating long, long hair or realistic fur in needle felting. Our New Zealand Coriadale has a micron count ranging from 27 to 30. So it is gonna feel coarser than our, than our MC1. The staple length of this fiber is about three inches. So it is, is quite long. Some of our favorite colors for needle felting bears or needle felting animals are black, butterscotch, cocoa, nutmeg, and natural light. Mm -hmm. Great colors. Everyone says, hi, Anne. Hi. <laughs> They're talking about pen pals and bear kits and all kinds of stuff. Exciting. <laughs> Next up is Fairy Alyssa. Hello everyone, my name is Fairy Alyssa and I am so excited to share with you our bear kits today. Um, I've been spending the past couple days putting them together and working on them. Each kit makes one bear with some fiber left over and they both support our bear from last week, Cookie, and our bear from this week, Muffin. So we can't wait to see what you guys are going to make with these and what they look like. Thanks. Yay! Yay! <laughs> 
Hey everybody, Fairy Kayla here, and I can barely contain my excitement. I'm glad nobody beat me to the punch before I work that in there. I've been thinking about it all day. So I have these crazy colors I wanted to show you guys because I was admiring these sweet little bears, and I thought, what colors would I make my bear? So of course I'm kind of a wild child. <laughs> so of course I gotta work dragon fruit in there for his fur, and then maybe some raspberry New Zealand and some wild berry um, MC1 for the, the skin underneath. So maybe I'll have a bear in a couple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> And then, important question for everybody, do you guys know why polar bears have fur coats? Why do polar <laughs> bears have fur coats? Because they look really funny in ski jackets. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll get out of here and turn it over to you, Marie. <laughs> round of hearts for the fairies this is our crew they pack your orders they answer your emails your phone calls they make absolutely everything that we sell here and hey you know what they felt too which is really fun to always see what they make and the colors that we we choose as groups always a blast and thank you guys for joining us so much so today we are making these two little guys uh, well we actually made cookie last week and uh, he is the guy with no fur and this week we're going to show you how you would turn a bear like cookie into a bear like muffin and give him long fur now really there's lots of different types of fur coats you can do this is sort of a short furry um, not too dense fur coat we're going to leave a little bit of room in that fur coat um, and not make it super packed if you're interested in some different techniques for making fur coats you can check out our youtube channel we did uh, applying fur long fur earlier this year and we did a few tutorials last year where i actually worked with very similar colors first we learned how to make what we called fur bits this was last year and then we did a 2d bunny in relief like you might do for a pillow cover and um, and then this year we did some wild colors kind of like what Kayla brought in so there's different ways to apply the fur and on this little guy um, muffin we're making his coat not too dense and the reason I'm working with the New Zealand Corydale is that it is a first of all it's got a long staple length second of all the fiber is not too fine if you use pure merino top and you apply this coat, as people handle your bear, it's just gonna get matted down and matted down. It's gonna tend to want to felt to itself and um, it won't look quite so fluffy. But I actually do like to blend a little bit of merino top in here and a couple of different colors of New Zealand Corydell. So the very first thing we're gonna start doing um, after you've made your bear cookie and you can check out our video from last week under the Wooly Wednesday playlist, or if you go to our website, um, if you go to our website, if you scroll to the bottom, there's a YouTube tutorials link. If you click on that, you can find that we link to all the shows that we do um, and find the show you're looking for there. So you know, make Cookie first, but have him disassembled. He'll just be in his parts and don't glue his eyes in yet either. So make your bare parts and don't glue in the eyes. And I would actually leave the ears off also and apply the fur to the ears before you apply it on the bear. So bare parts is what you're going to do. And um, let's blend some fur and just don't freak out. But what I'm gonna have, <laughs> I'm going to have um, Holly remove uh, I know. I get lots of jobs today. I know. I'm going to have Holly just <laughs> remove the legs off of this little guy because I want to show you just a slight deviation of um, how we're going to approach string jointing the bear when you have fur on the bear. So Holly, I'll have you just take off the legs. Okay. Just the legs. <laughs> just, okay. just, just people have just asked. Just the legs. Muffin could, doesn't mind. If you could repeat what color the, the bear is. Oh yeah, okay, so um, Cookie is made with our MC1 batting, and that's unique fiber to us, so you're not going to find it anywhere else. Uh, MC1 batting in caramel, and then we also used dark chocolate. So now to make the long fur, the fibers that I chose, and you can use whatever you like, but I'm using a custom blend. We're starting with New Zealand, Corydale, and Butterscotch. 
I am using, I used natural medium in mine and I'm gonna show you a few different things. I used New Zealand Coriadale natural medium. We've had a very difficult time getting this in. New Zealand has been backlogged for months on uh, the fibers that we import. Um, and so if you get our kit, you're getting fiber from Marie's stash, and this is Shetland, which is very close. It's a little, just a little bit darker. So if you get the kit, you're going to get Shetland in it, and you'll feel that compared to the New Zealand Coriadale, this is actually finer, but it's variegated and beautiful. And then I'm working in there Merino Top Mary Cash because I liked the brown, and I'm going to turn down here so you can see this. But I want to tell you just for the moment, if you can't find these exact fibers, you might check out our alpaca uh, top. This is a natural brown alpaca. It's a little more hairy, but um, you know, the New Zealand Corydale can be a bit hairy too. It can seem hairy, meaning like sticky outy. Um, we have a medium right now, we have light, and we have a dark brown. So you might check out alpaca, you might check out some other fibers with when you want the fur, in, the way we're gonna do it today is a longer staple length, so not something short. Cool? Okay, so let's look overhead real quick. I want you to be able to, to see these fibers. This is the base of our blend right here. I'll pull out a little bit so we're not too, too, too close for you. I want you to see the blend happening. Um, this is the Butterscotch New Zealand Coriadale. This is natural medium if you have that at home. Um, I think I've, I've used this for fur on my kangaroo in the past and my koala. This is what's coming in the kits, which is Marie's stash of Shetland. And then this is Merino Top in Mary Cash. And I like to blend up batches of fiber in advance, and I'm going to show you exactly how we do it. But this is what I've turned this pile into right here is this really nice little blend that has great variegation in it it tones down the butterscotch quite a bit um, but doesn't muddy it up too much and i'm going to show you exactly how i do that i'm going to bring in this uh, so that maybe it'll provide a contrast maybe that'll provide a little bit of contrast i'm just blending by hand you can blend with hand carters you can use your drum carter whatever you want but i'm going to show you the easy 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 peasy way i'm going to just Take my fiber in my hand, I'm gonna pull off, and I'm gonna lay it right on my, I just have a piece of felt right on top of my mat. Um, and this is cause the fur is gonna get everywhere. Um, and you might want a little something so that it doesn't completely stick to your foam. And I'm gonna show you, I'm putting this little thin layer here. So let me give you a little cross view. If you can see how thin, see how paper thin that is? Very thin, you can be as, stingy or generous as you want with this and then the merino top just a tiny bit like paper thin I'll go back overhead so you can see paper thin layer barely see it this to me just adds a little bit of brown and tones it down so now I have this fun little layering here and across the back is the butterscotch so I'm gonna layer it just like that you can flip the whole thing over if you want just to get a little more color in here and what I do with that hmm. what does it make it and here we go and another just a little pinch so now I've made this whole little sandwich of the fibers oh. On the floor. <laughs> I made this whole little sandwich of the fibers. It's actually kind of blended all the way through, but we're going to blend it with our hands. And just blend as much as you can hold on to. Um, it, you know, if it's less, great, it, no problem. But here's what we're going to do just stack and pull and stack and pull. And if this feels wide, which mine often does, but I have this great little pile, now I'll set this aside and I'll just blend this. Stack and pull stack and pull. So now notice when I'm pulling that I'm not tearing fibers. That's the most important thing. We're not tearing fibers. We're just like, it's almost like when you're shuffling cards, you know, and you pull all the cards through. Where you have these concentrations, just keep blending. Twist, turn it over, restack, so that you want a real homogenous blend. I don't really want a stripy bear. I want everything to be well blended. We have a couple of questions of yeah. people asking if you um, 
could just do the bear out of core wool and then attach the fur or if it has to, if you should really put a base that on. that's a great question and on our fur video that we did um just a couple of months back i think it was in january where we did applying long fur and we did more fur bits I, there were fur bits and what did i call the new ones do you remember Anyway, we did just that. We only covered him with a core wool. It's really up to you. You can use the base color to help guide stripes and spots. I think that's kind of what we did new this year. We did stripes and spots. And you can just do core wool, but mostly you don't want that core wool showing through. So sometimes I like to have that base color underneath there. And it does depend on how sparse or how dense you want that fur coat to be. If the fur coat's going to be very dense, then um, you can just do it in just the core wool. Honestly, you can. But we've been doing um, kind of like stacked lessons this year. So we've been um, building upon our lessons like we did our... Easter eggs and then bunnies from needle felted Easter eggs and then bunnies from Easter eggs and then Papa Bunny from Easter eggs. So um, that's kind of what was our goal here is to show you how to do a basic string jointed bear and then how to do one with fur. But you can absolutely do it with just a, a core wool base. Really is up to you. So I think we have a pretty good little blend going here and it's got some interest to it. It's got some variety. It doesn't look too stripey and you can always, you know, keep stacking and blending everything. Um, the one thing you want to do is keep all your fibers going in the same direction. So keep that direction uniform and don't let it get too mixed up. Now set one of these aside and save one back. And then you want your short scissors and this is kind of where this is where the, the mess comes in because we're going to be cutting this. Now, some people will apply really long fibers, but this is long. You're looking at pretty much the staple length of the New Zealand Corydale. So the staple length is the length of that lock when it's cut off the sheep. And this is way too long to deal with to on our bear. So I'm going to get it just the blend just how I want it. And then I usually fan it out so it feels like a single layer, if you will kind of like a single layer. Get it kind of flat, and I'm gonna cut approximately one inch increments. And I will, I don't tend to cut all my fiber up at once, I go in stages, cause it's a lot to deal with, and it tends to get like, my hands will hit it and I'll just rough it up. I'll, I'll make a mess of it if I have too much out. And when you get to this end right here, don't worry that some ends are cut and some ends are pointy, it's all fine. Okay, so now we have our little stack of fiber that we're going to work with. And why don't we start needle felting a leg or a foot? So the arms and the legs are going to be just the same. We're going to do them the same. Um, and so I'm just going to show you how to do a foot. Are there any questions before I start, Holly, that I should address? Uh, well, some people were asking if the, with the blending if you should start with a darker color on the bottom if there was a certain... Mm way you should stack your your colors when you're blending them. I want to also encourage that you walk wash um, blending fibers. We have a video on YouTube for it's probably under the needle felting. It's definitely under Wooly Wednesday from last year where I talked about blending fibers for animals. And there was even one where we took some different types of animals like a calico cat or a gray cat or a, I don't remember all the dogs that we did. And we show you just at least my approach, but what I do generally when I'm looking at it, whether it's a play pretend animal or a realistic animal, is I try and hone in on what I think is that most prominent tone or color. Um, and I start with that as a base and then I'll blend other colors into it. So as you see, this is mostly the butterscotch with just a hint of these little guys in there. So. This is going to be the main, and I start with whatever is that main color. And I will start with that main color and blend colors until I get what represents the main body of the animal. Let's say it's a, a golden retriever. I'll blend this until I get to what feels like the most prominent color tone of that retriever. And then I would add more blondes for the highlights and more browns for the dark areas or more reddish tones, depending on what your, your animal looks like. So. I try and make usually an initial blend um, and I'm always going to start with what feels like the most prominent tone. And I know that this seems like a far jump, 
but I don't think that this seems like a far jump if I go overhead. So like the butterscotch seems like a far jump from caramel, but adding the gray browns and the browns, it's amazing how you can tone it down with just a few additions and get right in there. So just just take a stab at it and haha, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended, but take a stab at it. Look how little fiber I'm blending. Um, and just start, if you're gonna make this guy or start with like our kit, then just start with a layer of this and then do just a really see-through layer of these additional colors that we've added. Blend this up this tiny amount and see how you like it. If you don't like it, add more. Just add more. That was one other question I've yeah. had a few people had was, is there any, um, like from your experience, how much should you blend in order to be able to finish the bear? Oh, I honestly, y'all, I here's here's kind of my thing is I'm going to blend about the amount that I just showed you. And then before I run out or make my next blend, I'll save this much back. So I always save back like a control of what I want to blend towards. Um, but for this little bear, we think that we didn't even add a tenth of an ounce of fiber on top of him. Like if you were to really weigh it, it's like a tenth of an ounce. So not even a quarter of an ounce. And I would say, you know, just take it in stages. And if you like the original blend you come up with, just save it back before you blend the next batch. Some people love to sit and just blend a whole ton at a time. When I'm working in my lap, I'm less likely to do that which is pretty much how I work when I go home. <laughs> All right, let's put some fur on this foot and I'm just gonna get you started so that y'all can get over any white page syndrome, any concern about this at all. I'm pulling off a little tiny bit. I'm gonna stand my foot up. In fact, I'll pin him down so he just stands right there for me, for you, so that I don't have to get my hands involved. And I am going to, on everything we do, we're going to be needle felting, or almost everything we do, we're going to be needle felting into the fold. So I'm gonna start, which is right here at the toe. Uh, I put the fiber, I'm just laying it on the toe, and why don't you just let the bottom fibers touch the foam of that, and we're gonna needle felt right into the fold, around the toe, just where you think the fold is. You don't even have to worry about getting it perfect gonna needle felt right into that fold. When it gets to the top of the foot, it'll be a little bit easier to see. Now, start with your finer needles in the beginning because your one, your piece should be firmly needle felted. If you were with us last week, it should be firmly needle felted. Um, to when we needle felt in, we don't wanna misshape it a lot, but if you try and drive these fibers in with like a 36 triangle, you're going to start to really compress that wool some more and we don't wanna do that. So try your 38 triangle, maybe a 38 spiral, which is what I'm using right here, or a 40 triangle to start. Um, and just get that, you want the fiber to be anchored in, and we've needle felted in the fold. We're gonna fold it over, and then we're gonna tack it down. Right on top of that fold, we're gonna tack it down. We're gonna leave a little bit of space before we put our next layer. And what I like to do is a few layers and then trim, a few layers and then trim. So I'm gonna just select more from my pile. I'll put some up here so you can see. I'm gonna select more from my pile, take off a pinch. You wanna keep all the fibers going in the same direction. And I'm gonna leave a tiny space. How big of a space? Maybe like that much of a space before I needle felt my next layer. So you could needle felt if you want it dense, you could be needle felting your next fold right there where the this fold was, or you can leave a tiny space and that's what I'm going to do. Leave a tiny space. So put your piece on. You kind of have to eyeball it as you go and start tacking where you think that middle is. You put the middle right where you want to needle felt. If your fibers are not anchoring into the piece like you want, then go to a slightly more coarse needle. Just don't jump up so much that you are misshaping your pieces. They will start to firm up a little bit more and condense a little bit more as you needle felt this fur in. And then fold this over and tack that down. I tend to use my finer needle when I tack that down. Just Some people were asking, um, why use a triangle needle as opposed to another? Well, uh, in this case, I'm suggesting that you use a medium needle 
Um, so I don't want you to use a star because a star tends to be a little more aggressive. And a triangle, a 40 triangle um, has a pretty good grip. I Sometimes I feel like a 40 spiral is a little too more gentle than I want to use. A 38 triangle might be okay, but notice I'm using a 40 triangle and a 38 spiral. So they're a couple of steps apart, but just feel what's comfortable to you. Decide what's comfortable to you. Play with your different needles. It helps when you have a few different uh, needle sizes to play with. Okay, here we go with another right on top. Again, I'm gonna leave a tiny, a tiny space. So I'm gonna start needle felting. I'm gonna start needle felting right about where my needle is and this space I'm leaving open. So put the middle right on there where you think that is and tack her down. You'll notice that if you use a more aggressive needle, you feel that you're really compressing your fiber more and you, you want the fiber to be anchored in, but you don't want to, um, like I say, reshape the piece. The piece should be nice and firm and hold its shape as you needle felt into it. Okay, so let's fold this down. Fold this over. And now we got this, right now I had this big fluffy foot. My my husband, when I was working on muffins, said, who's the Wookiee? <laughs> <laughs> and they can look really fuzzy, really fuzzy at first. Actually, I'm gonna do one more, cause that, that uh, I'm gonna put one more layer in and then we'll trim this up just so you can get the idea. This is all you do, is you decide that density and um, that you want dense or uh, a little bit sparse and keep I start from the bottom and work my way up so that all of your layers can be one on top of the other and this is a fold so this is the um, medium density fur which includes it's we're leaving a bit of a space and um, we're folding the fiber over on, when we get to the face part, we'll do parts of it a little more like hair or a thin fur where we don't do a fold. And we show that on our uh, furbit video. We show a few different ways to do it. So let me pull this foot up and you can see kind of how we're going. Um, he's this big, furry, fluffy foot. You can see how far it's sticking over the end quite far in some places. And this is also why I saved doing the paw pad last, so that you're not then poking these colors through the paw pad. But see how furry it is? And now, <clears throat> don't be afraid, but if you are, if you've not done this before and you're a little concerned about it, make a furbit. Watch our furbit video. The whole goal of the furbits is to give you a practice tool for how to needle felt your fur on your pieces. I like to kind of train the fur the way I want it to go. So over the foot, we want it to go down and around. You can flick it with your needles. You, we can use our furbit comb here in a minute when we get uh, on a little more dense parts. But I like to kind of get the fiber where I want it going, and then I'm going to trim it. And I don't need it any longer than the bottom of this foot. It should be about flush with the bottom of my foot. So this is where the real messy business comes in, is uh, all the stuff that you cut is gonna get everywhere. And having a little piece of felt on here will help you keep it clean. So that looks pretty cute and it's actually not too dense, but what you can do is then just go into it a little bit and snip it. Snip it and break it up a little bit. And if you feel like parts of it are too long this way, you can trim it this way more too. You can trim it down so that it's almost bare. You know, it's almost bare and sparse. And I've done that like on uh, one of my koalas. It's made them look really scruffy, like an older koala. Aww. They tend to look kind of scruffy. Um, Cute little vintage teddy bear. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm working on one right now that's a more of another, another style of vintage bear. But so you can see, you can use your doll needle or your felting needle and just flick that fur to see how you like it. And so what do y'all think, you know, as you look at this little foot, what do you think about the fur density on there? They're all, they're all loving it. They're saying how cute he is. And um, one question is, is then would you do um, the whole leg and then yeah. trim it? Or would you do in pieces like that? I like to do it like this. I like to do it in pieces like because sections. it's more like I like to find what I want and then repeat and then repeat, repeat. Now, the difference I wanna show you as you as you build up your feet is I wanna show you uh, this one that we've done here. So on the legs, I've left the inside of the leg without fur. 
I've left just this running right down the inside without fur. You could put fur on yours if you want, but I've left mine without fur. And the only other thing as you're building your foot, so see it, how this looks all the way, you're just gonna build it all the way up. I like to comb, I like to tease it out with my doll needle, or one of my, your large da darning needles and make sure you like it. I'll, I'll, um, I'll add just a, well, we have to jump to the face, but as you get up here, you're just gonna trim it this the same way you do right here on the top of the foot, is just trim it, comb it out first, and then trim it so that it's nice and close by going back in. If it's too long, you can snip it off just like I did right here. Um, when I did the string joints, though, I left this part bare. I left this part bare until I got it on the bare so that is an option. So last time when we did our string jointing, we string jointed on the inside of the leg. We ran our string joints on the inside. So y'all who haven't done that before are gonna have to watch that video. But if that's not comfortable for you or you feel like you want even a stronger join, if you leave this part bare until you get it on the critter, then you can just run your thread right through the outside, okay? So just do your whole leg the same way, layer, 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 layer. Let's jump real quick and look at how we do the body. If everyone's comfortable with us moving on from I the I think it looks like everybody is ready. So you would do the top part. The only other question is um, finish the top and then flip it over and do the back side. Yeah, I just, when I do this, I do all of this at once. Okay. So for me, just like we did this whole part of the foot where I'm doing the leg here, I go around, 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 around. I like to just do that whole circumference kind of at once. So I'll lay it like this, and I'm gonna put that fur band on, the fur band on, the fur band on. Needle felt this way, trim it down. You can cover the back if you want. I just left mine bare. That was my, my preference. Okay, foot, that's foot. Let's look at body. Body is really the same way. Here we go, body, getting a little skirt. What Now when I do the body, I do like to go all the way around, but I did this for y'all so that we could have a point to jump to. But for the body, I'm doing the same length. So here's the, the fiber I already blended. Um, this one, this was an end, you can tell, because these parts are even longer, and that's fine. I'm going to start right about here. I'm going to leave the very bottom of the piece naked until I'm done string jointing him. And I'm going to start right about here. And I like to just kind of spread this out. I think it's easy to get too dense uh, pretty quickly on these things. So spread it all out. I'm going to use my 38 spiral and I would go from, I mean, you can't see this under here, but I'm going to go from all the way around. And when I go all the way around, that means I would lay it down, needle felt in the fold until I've gotten all the way around. And then generally I'm going to fold it, uh, fold it after. So needle felt in the middle and just tack it down. Everybody's in love with the bear. How cute he is. Let's see, where did it go? Um, Pam said she taught her nine-year-old granddaughter how to felt a fur bit. Oh, and here's, here's Muffin without his feet, so he's just gonna, <laughs> he's gonna watch us for a minute. Okay, so needle felt all the way around, and then you're gonna fold it down, just like we did on the leg, fold it down. Now here, I sometimes you might want to needle felt into the length a little bit more you know you don't have to you could just needle felt the top it depends on how sticky outy you want it to be if you really want it to lay down you can tack your needle through if you want it to stick up and be a little more fluffy then just needle felt this top part right here so that it doesn't have a big fold over if you know what I mean you're kind of taming down that ridge but when I skip to the next line we are leaving space unless you want it super super dense just skip a space and you won't notice it once we comb it, and I'm gonna show you. You're not gonna notice that you've skipped a space. So I'll fold this up when I'm done instead of down so you can see that space I skipped. So somebody was asking if you could use a reverse so, needle. When yeah, you know, re reverse needle is just a different process. So with this particular body being made out of our MC1 batting and core wool on the inside, both of those are a very short staple length and they're crimpy. They're not hairy like this. And the core wool's on the inside. So when you use a reverse needle, it pulls wool out. Um, mine are at home. It pulls wool out 
and in this case it wouldn't you probably wouldn't want to use our MC1 batting unless you just wanted something that was like a little fluffy because it's such a short crimpy staple length it won't look furry like this it'll just look a little fluffy so uh, the short a reverse needle is a different process and a different I would suggest a different fiber on the inside if you want it to look furry okay we're gonna get this one done and I just want to show you the so basically I just use my needle to kind of mark the middle there everyone is not perfect it doesn't help that I keep looking up at the <laughs> at looking up at the screen to make sure I'm on there um, so do that and then you would fold it down but let me fold it up for you just so you can see the little space we've left we've left a little space in there see and that's not too much to leave this little space let's fold see once you get it's like you've got layer upon layer in here it's harder to find where that space is but you can so look at here see how fluffy this one is here's a big space here and there's an equal space right up here somewhere but you'd have to dig to find it so once you get your layers going around and you kind of like them you can use the furbit comb if you want this is um we've listed this as supplies for this week's tutorial and if you comb it you'll kind of glean out some of this extra that you you know just don't need in there let let it strip a little bit of it out as long as your fibers are well anchored in there then you're just taking off some stuff that would come off anyway if people are handling it and then trim it as short as you want so for me I don't want any of these fibers too long um, and you can comb your bear's fiber out this way if you want and trim it so it's a short length this way or you can just go in and snip it and I'm gonna kind of comb it all out let's trim it to like a sort of uniform depth Trim it all around. Just give them a quick, a quick little snip. Well, while you're trimming, uh, yeah, quite a few people have asked if you think that the fur is durable enough for a child to handle it, or how durable. It really depends it on the child. I mean, let's be honest. Some children, <laughs> some children, you would give scissors, and some you would never. All right. <laughs> Oh yeah. Some children, <laughs> so look, go in and snip now too. Some children you would teach to needle felt and some you know, oh, that is not for them. So the, if it depends on how little they are. So think of it as an art doll or something. You wouldn't give it to a baby who's gonna put it in their mouth. You know, you wanna be mindful about what you give them to. And I would say if you're going to do that, then make sure that you um, really have a very firm core inner and that you really anchor those fibers in so if you have a very firm inner see if you see lines like this here that's where you want to go after them if you have a very firm inner then the more you can anchor those fibers in completely so I you know I'm not a mother so I, I'm not the best person to answer that question I'm mean, honestly but Holly right. you are what do right. you think I mean an older child like you know six seven eight if they were playing with them with their dolls I think right that would be fine I'd, I'd, but, but not, definitely not, not less. give it to a younger child I could see my children chewed on everything right <laughs> my children I would give them scissors but they did chew on everything <laughs> <laughs> So y'all get to decide how long you want your fur coat, but you can see that once you trim it, you know, once you give it a trim and then you go after and get up to some of those parts, then you just have little furry bits. So for him, um, here's his little, here's his little belly and you just keep filling it in. And I just gave him fur all the way around and didn't give him any different colors or shading on his tummy. And I like to, but I just kind of kept it simple. Um, so all we're doing is layering all the way up and all the way around. The arms are no different than the feet. In fact, on him, I haven't even applied, you know, the paw pad color. And I did leave the inside bear. This was just kind of represented the, the vintage bear to me. This kind of goofy. Except if I thought about giving him a seam down the middle. I think that would make oh. him really look like a vintage bear if he had a Sweet. seam. Yeah. 
He's going to sleep on his on his foot. Okay. All right. Let's look at maybe what might be a little different uh, with the face when we do faces. And this again, this is just a play bear. It's not a it's not a real bear. It's not meant to look like a real bear. It's just a play bear. Um, but whenever you have animals, the coat tends to change direction. And so what I like to do is start with the eye. And um, I like to start with the eye because it's such an important part of the, the face and then get those fibers going out. So you want to be very thin uh, and mindful about you know what we're doing but notice that they're coming right out from the eye socket but we don't want a furry eye at least on me I me on me I don't <laughs> want a furry eye I didn't want a furry eye on this little guy so um, when we take this fiber right here you it's just you just take like a little tiny pinch you can fold it over or not fold it over it's up to you if you don't fold it over then you can just anchor it right out of the eye socket and fan it out or if you do fold it over, just be very sparse about it. So don't go too dense uh, right around the eye. And in this case, I just folded it first and then I'm gonna put it right in that eye socket. So it's already folded and I'm gonna needle felt it down. Right there. And we kinda want it to fan around. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, so um, Diane was asking, are you doing the eyes like you did on the barn owl ornament? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Kind of like the barn owl, the barn owl ornament. We just kind of fan, gonna fan these fibers out and around. Um, and you can go as you know slow or wild as you want to with this. It doesn't really matter. And it's, everybody loved your comment about the scissors. What did I say about the scissors with some, some <laughs> children you would give scissors to? Yeah, I, I don't have a lot of experience with children, but we did do a, a fair once, I recall, and um, kids, our, our table or with Living Felt, we did a fair and kids were allowed to just come sit. It was Maker Fair, and I thought we'd get some adults, but man, these kids took over the table in a red hot minute, and I couldn't even get to the table. And there were these children, needle felting, they grabbed tools, and one child was literally just murdering whatever he was doing, <laughs> while another girl was sitting there focused in on detail, needle felting, like a picture. Every single one of yeah. them is so different. Yeah. So some children did not get to stay at the table, I might add, <laughs> because they were dangerous. Okay, so before I go too far with that, you can just kind of flick you know flick this fiber out and even trim it down to kind of where you want it um, and all I did was just kind of fan around the eye there and I'm gonna trim it right now before I go too far because I want to see what I'm doing elsewhere so I just give a trim around and then go after it so it doesn't look uh, perfectly uniform um, and around the um, the mouth or the muzzle I like to do the same thing, and that's just be very um, gradual as you apply the fibers, the same right here on the nose. Just be very gradual as you apply them. So I'm going to apply some of these. What other questions do we have that I can answer as we kind of build up on this little guy? Well, it looks like we have a, we have a couple of people that have joined a little bit late, and they just wanted to have a little reminder on what kind of fur, I mean, what kind of fiber we're using for the fur. Okay. Um, this is New Zealand Corydale. In fact, you, I know you'll have to watch back in the beginning, but to, we're, we're using mostly New Zealand Corydale with a little bit of Merino top rolled in there. Um, so right here, like on the nose, um, right here, you can start from the eye and go down to the nose or start from the nose and go up. Um, but I like to go right on that nose bridge right there and I'm gonna needle felt my fold right at the top of the nose, right there. I can't wait to make one of them. <laughs> so cute. They're, they're pretty nice little buddies to do at night. <laughs> so now in this case, I'm folding that fiber back and I just want it to look furry. It doesn't need to be um, sticky uppy on the face. You know what I mean? You can needle felt it so that it all lays down and it doesn't even really stick up. It just has, it just feels like a short fur and you can make it a little bit longer or you can, you know, continue to stack your layers up. But you're not going to see that that's one long piece of fur. It's just going to feel furry there. 
Now I do both, I usually do eye-eye, you know, eye the eyes at the same time, each side of the face at the same time. But right here on the muzzle, I wanna bring this fiber down. So just pick your point. Um, you could do it single, as I mentioned. You could needle felt in just the butt of that fiber there, but it's a little bit easier to grab onto if you fold it. So if you go ahead and take just you know a little narrow pinch and fold it right here at the side of the nose or along this line to the eye and let that kind of be your fold right there. And these are just guides. You know what? You may already, somebody else might already be saying they, they do it differently. Feel free to add your ideas or comments. There's no one way to do things, y'all. I, I, every time I share, I just like to offer the reminder, this is just one way and um, there's as many ways as there are artists. So have fun with you know finding your own way and making up your own things as we go along. I don't like to teach rules. I like to just, mm -hmm. I like to help you get rid of your blank page syndrome. If you, you haven't tried something and you want to, let's do it on something non-threatening like a furbit or a vintage teddy bear. What's, <laughs> you know, there's just nothing scary about a vintage teddy bear. Now a clown, we could have a conversation about that. Maybe a clown. <laughs> Some of us are kind of afraid of clowns. I don't know. <laughs> but a vintage teddy bear, nothing scary about him. I kind of feel bad for clowns. I don't Once know. Upon a time, they were I don't like know. Happy. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Something about a, cl a rodeo clown, fine. A, per a, a real clown in person, fine. But something about a, a doll clown, they scare me. No, I'm just teasing. But if you, if you especially if you love clowns, I don't mean to say that. But I'm saying there's nothing threatening about a bear. So if you want to try fur on an animal, but you're feeling a little intimidated, well, try something like this. That's pretty simple. And then I'm going to cut this real, this one real close to the face um, because I want that muzzle to be really, really close and tight. And I don't want it to go over his mouth. So I'm going to cut it right at the mouth line there. You can always add the mouth line on after if you want. Honestly, I, I built this little bear um, in kind of a different order of stages. But just for the moment, let me tuck his little eye back in there. Now I've put stuff in the eye socket, so let me reframe my hole with my 36 triangle. Use your coarse needles to make deep holes and deep lines. And let's put his eye in there and see how y'all are feeling about him. So he's coming along. And there's a little more fur to build up here. And you can just get as furry as you want with your little guy. So is there something I can answer right now, Holly? Um, I think, we, again, we've had a couple of questions um, that, okay, I am not Anne. Did we ever tell everybody <laughs> You're that? You're doing a good job, Holly. Is it Holly doing a good job, y'all? Um, about assembling, putting the fur on. It's is it definitely better to make him furry before you put him together? Oh, oh, definitely make him furry before you put him together because this would be a struggle. This would be, I feel like it would be a lot more effort because he comes in parts. Now, if you were doing uh, an animal that didn't, you didn't want to be string jointed and come in parts, well then feel free to add all the fur, you know, once you have him built if you want. But because he is a string jointed critter and his head turns and his arms turn, then it's worthwhile to put the fur on before you attach him. And that way you get to, you get to get into all these little tight areas that you don't want joined. You know, you want to be able to spin his head. And when you're applying this fur, it just gets a little tight and you're going to end up needle felting it through that join, you know what I mean? Right. It's there, a little more challenging. It's kind of a two-part question. There was one other person who, um, and I'm sorry, I'm trying very hard to keep up with everybody's You're doing names. great. Um, they made their bear from last week, and uh -huh. now they really want to add some fur. I mean, yeah. it's, it's possible, right? It's just not that easy. Take him apart. Take him apart, okay. Take him apart and restring him. You're not going to hurt him. It'll, you'll, you know, it'll be more fun for you if you just go ahead and restring him. Like right here, you may not want to fold, right here on the on the bridge of the nose, but see how we, you know, we blended all of that fur in right there? You can take this fur right here, let the ends stick up, just get it how you want it, and then just needle felt these right there into the face. So you don't always have to fold. Folding is not a rule. It's just some places where it's gonna support you more than others. And if you have too much fiber, well then just pull it off. I'm trying to find a good one for you about clowns. 
Celine said her, her former husband was in a band named Afraid of Clowns. I just had to share that. Thank you, Celine. Little clown hands in here. Thank you, Celine. And now under this little frock, then I'll go ahead and put another. I'll go ahead and put another fold um, right under there. Usually I put the ears on after also, so I don't think I pre-made an ear for y'all, but. Um, again, if it feels like you're using your needle, like here I'm using my 42 triangle and it feels like the wool's just not, just anchoring, jump up to a 40, see does that feel better. If it doesn't feel like it's anchoring, jump up to a 38, triangle or spiral, triangle or spiral. And just, you're going to have to be a little more gentle if you jump up to a 38 spiral or something like that. And then fold it all back, including that little front face and tack them all down. If you feel like you have a sparse area that you're not happy with, like you have too big of a, like I feel like I have too big of a jump right here, just fold this part back and add another little layer. Uh, just, just before you go too far, just wedge it in there into the middle. So I'm going to put one right there. I think people like this fur. Now I think you're, we have some requests for monkeys and furry cats. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think I'm not a good person to do a cat because I'm not a cat owner. We need to get you know? to do a cat. Yeah. But we, we do have, later this year, I do have a, a very, it's planned for a very special guest to come uh, for the school and teach a class that, of a more realistic animal with fur that I think you all will appreciate. So um, for me, Marie is really like, um, if it comes to realism, I'm probably the last person you want to learn from <laughs> for whatever reason. It's not my... That's not my forte. Well, uh, then there was a, a doll clown. I don't know that we really want to. Do we want to make a clown? I can't do it. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> right? I don't know who we, we, we'd get to pack that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've just run out of my stuff. So I have I have this left, and I only really need a pinch, but... Um, you just remembered, before you use all that you have, save some back before you make your next your next blend. So I'm just going to get another little bit of layer in here, just on this side of the face. Um, and for those of you who've just joined us, you're going to have to watch last week's lesson on needle felting a string jointed bear to get to this little foundation. Well, you don't have to, you might already know how, but if you don't know how, the lesson is there and it's free right here on the, our YouTube channel. And Cookie keeps trying to get, Muffin keeps trying to get involved. <laughs> yeah. He really out. wants to monitor this progress. Oh. <laughs> Fun. And thanks y'all for being here. We appreciate you so much. And if those of you who are looking for supplies, there is a link in the description. We link to the page where you can also watch this tutorial on our on our website. We also link to, if you want supplies a la carte, we also have a little wool pack, um, as Alyssa told you, for these guys. So... You can, you'll need the foam and the needles, but for those people who just want the wool pack of the fibers I'm working with today, they are available. And it also comes with the, um, the same glass eyes I'm using, and it comes with a little thread for string jointing and a little bit of core wool. So if you just want to make um, cookie, you can make cookie, or if you want to make muffin, you can make muffin from that little wool pack. Can you use merino top for the fur? Yeah, and I, um, Holly, would you, I'm going to ask you a huge favor. Would yeah. you go out and grab Herman? Sure. Ask Anne for Herman. Okay, I will ask she, I'm going to ask for, just before we sign out today for those, and I've showed Herman lots of times, but if you're asking the question, I know you haven't seen him, but I want to show you what a critter looks like that's made with merino top um, for the fur that has been handled a lot. So if you do shows... If you're planning to give this to someone as a gift and it's not going to sit on a shelf uh, behind glass or someplace where nobody will touch it, I want to show you what will happen to it. If you use a fine fiber, it's why I choose to use a more coarse fiber and I blend in the merino for texture and for color. So this blend that we're using does have merino top in it, but only a pinch. And um, I'm making him a little more furry. Um, only a pinch of merino top. And um, as soon as Holly brings him in, you'll see why. Because the merino top will just readily mat down. Oh, very good. Thank you so much, Holly. Okay, and you might like this fur effect. Um, 
the one uh, that I'll show you in a minute when, that's made with merino top. But if you want it to still be able to uh, be separated and fluffed up, then cut it, or in other words, blend it with something that's a little more coarse, like New Zealand Coriadel. Oh, this looks like he has a mane. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is different, aren't they? Um, okay. I'm going to get a little fiber going down here. He's fun. So, um, we've been asked, the fur pack, the, yeah. the supply pack for this is, yeah. is it up on the site yet? Yeah. It is up on the site. Yeah. So we link to the supply page for this for today's tutorial and so if you go to the supply page you can either get just download a supply list or you can um, jump over to the kit uh, whichever you're more comfortable with the kit meaning the supply pack yeah okay so notice I'm just kind of teasing that out at the face and he's and he's really fluffy he they, they don't have to be but uh, and you can trim it all down too so he's really fluffy and you see how this guy looks. I just kind of comb it down and I start to shape it where I want it and then I'll and then I'll trim it. So I wanted his face to be a little longer hair. Um, and I'll trim it a little bit closer at the ears. But you can make him as fluffy or as close as you want. I love seeing like the how some people um, do cuts on their like their little bichon that freezes <laughs> and they turn him into little bears. I'm like, oh my god, that dog would just rule my life. <laughs> little bossy thing looking so cute you just like give him everything he asks for I, I know I would <laughs> <laughs> couldn't resist so make yours as long or short as you want and I, I regret that I didn't bring in my uh, koala that I've uh, added fur to but it is fun to try different uh, techniques and maybe you know before the year is up um, we'll look at a few different applications. As I mentioned, I'm working on a, a different style vintage bear. And, um, you know, just y'all can do whatever you want. There are no rules. Your bear could be pink or purple like Kayla's or our crazy fur monsters. What did we call those things uh, that we made earlier this year? Um, this is our little fur bit comb. Uh, good for combing things out. I am being gentle with it, but you can kind of direct the fiber in the way you want it to go. But this is how we go about it from the arms to the, from the appendages to the body to the head. So a uh, real quick, I'm going to slot in for you. This is Herman. We don't know what he is, so don't ask me. He's, he's been said like the, <laughs> the rats of unusual size that from, from Princess Bride. He's pretty cute. Okay. So this is, this is a hundred percent Merino top. Let me just move this out of the way for a second so you can see his coat is only Merino top. And if I were to try and fluff this up with the, the fur bit comb, it's just a lot more close. And you might like this, but all of this here is matted down and laying down. You can't you can't see the fur as well as you once could, and it's just one color. So I think it's a good example of doing something in just one color versus adding some dimension to the coat by blending some different fibers in. And this might be fine for you, but all of this, I'm telling you, this is just matted from being handled over the years. If you were to cut this with a bit of... Um, New Zealand Coriadel or something, it would fluff up a little bit better and look a little more natural than the 100% Merino. But if it's not going to be touched, then that's okay. If it's not going, you know, if it's really just going to be something that they put on display or on a shelf, then you might consider using 100% Merino top. But maybe you still want to cut the coat. Um, okay, so to assemble your bear, you're going to want to jump um, back to last week's tutorial. We'll post a post a link in the description or if you just go to our website again and let me see do I have that here if you go to our website go to the bottom and go to YouTube tutorials you'll see needle felting a bear with string joints and this week we're calling this needle felting a vintage bear or a, or a string jointed bear that's furry something like that and we're um, offering this as our vintage uh, needle felting a vintage bear just to differentiate it from our original bear um, what do you think, Holly? Any final questions we need to tackle? Uh, I don't see any final questions. Everybody wanted to know what the little fur bit comb was called. Fur bit. Fur bit. <laughs> we call it the fur bit. <laughs> fur we call bit it comb. the fur bit comb. As I answered the question mm -hmm. in my question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. We've got a lot of clown comments. And a lot of Princess Bride comments. <laughs> I love Princess Bride. <laughs> 
I've I never love, seen it. You haven't seen Princess Bride? <laughs> Oh and I my love Manny Patinkin, and I've never seen it. Uh, it depends on what kind of <laughs> sense of humor you have. It's a real cornball. <laughs> a real cornball movie. I, Good. Well, I can't wait to see your bears. Now, listen, y'all. Here's where we share our bears all week in our, or whatever we're making. It doesn't matter what you're making. High fashion, wall art, wearables. We share them in our Facebook group all week long just so we can cheer on and support each other. If you're looking for more tutorials, you can check out our Facebook group. Or also, if you're looking for... Um, more involved tutorials. We have free lessons and we have paid lessons making some really incredible stuff in our online school called feltingtutorials.com. You can go and register for absolutely free. You can check out the free classes and just make sure that the technology works for you and the way the classes are formatted work for you. And each class has like a little teaser. So that's called feltingtutorials.com. And if you make something, make sure you tag us. Uh, you can tag us on Instagram, you can tag us in general, and we will hopefully see your picture and maybe share it on our web page too. Is there any final thing we should answer? I think that Holly we have answered we got it covered. most of oh, the good, questions. Good, good. I'm sorry if I missed yours. You did. Thank you, you all for the support. Yeah, if we <laughs> if we didn't answer your question, make sure to comment down below for another chance to win. But right now, Holly and I are going to give away some prizes. Thank you all for participating, and thank you all for making your bears. I mean, I saw the most beautiful, colorful, sweet, charming bears in our Facebook group this week. I tried to comment on all of them, or at least heart all of them. It's a challenge because there's so many of you, <laughs> and there's so few of us. But Holly has a magic hat full of names, mm -hmm. and we she's going to come in here. This has been Holly's um, okay. first time. If there's a blank, okay. we'll ignore it. There's it's been <laughs> Holly had a whole bunch of chits to write down names on. So, um, Holly, good job. It's your first uh, show. Thank you. Thank you. Host. Thank you for all the, the hearts and the nice comments. I appreciate it. Okay, so Holly, what prizes are we giving away today? So, we have the kit for cookie and muffin. Mm -hmm. um, or we have our MC1 goodie bag, which you can make cookies and muffins. I guess just cookies. <laughs> right? Just cookies. Yeah, just cookies. Unless and they have their own long Unless fur. you have your own long fur yeah. in all kinds of pretty yeah. colors. Okay, so we're going to draw a couple names. If we if we call your name, you get to choose what you want. And if you're not in our database, well then, meaning you've never ordered something from us, even a free download, then you just go to our website, use the contact us page and tell us that you won and give us all your information. Or go ahead and set up an account and then tell us. So are you ready? I have a blank one. <laughs> I thought I had, you know, Monica Ward okay. is one of our winners. I have one, and I have Vicki Bedang. Congratulations, gals. Hold yours up real close, Holly. They can see. Congratulations. Thank you all so much for playing with us today. Now, listen, we it's spring, which means it's time for our spring cleaning. And I know it's been a bit of a wonky year with our big snowstorm and all kinds <laughs> of stuff happening. But we're going to be out for two weeks. The store is open. The shop is open. We're here. You can call us. You can email us. But we're not going to have Wooly Wednesday for two weeks. So go to our Facebook page. We're going to post when we're going to be back. Um, and we just need to do our annual reset because we have a long season. From like September through March is our high season. <laughs> we need to take a few weeks to kind of reset the house. And... Um, yeah, thank you so much for playing with us. In the meantime, Make Bears, we're going to come back with some fun projects this year. I promise we're going to wet felt um, and have some wet felting and mixed media projects as well. More needle felting, of course. And we can't wait till we see you next time. Bye, y'all. Be good to yourselves, and thank you so much. Bye.